Welcome to Classics Confidential. I'm here today with um, Professor Edith Hall, who is um, the Professor of Classics at University of London. And uh, we're here to talk about um, Iphigenia and Tauris, right? Um, and you've been working with, um, well, in this kind of research um, project or um, uh, with Tony Harrison, the uh, famous playwright and poet. And uh, yeah, would you like to tell me a little bit about the, uh, and us about the, um, about the project that you've been working on? Absolutely, it's very exciting. Um, I've been interested in the Iphigenia and Tauris, which is one of Euripides' uh, least known tragedies these days, though it has been very famous, for example, in the 18th century. Um, I've been interested in it since the 1980s because it was very important to my doctoral research, which was on the way the Greeks saw barbarians and, and how ethnicity worked in the ancient Greek theatre. But um, it was only about five years ago that I actually discovered, almost by accident, mm. that there was a theatre, an ancient Greek theatre, in Taurus. Now, people have tended to think that Taurus is some sort of rather imaginary place. It's a bit like a mm. prosperous yeah. island in the Tempest. But it isn't. For the ancient Greeks, Taurus very definitely meant the south coast of the Crimea. Mm -hmm. And Taurus, Tauric Kersonissos, as it is, was called in ancient Greece, is a town, a Greek town, on the site of modern Sevastopol, okay. which is the uh, southwest corner of the Crimea. Okay. And there's a 4th century Greek theatre there. Wow. And on the Black Sea, is it? Absolutely on the coast of the Black Sea. Okay. It's uh, perishing cold in winter, uh -huh. just as Iphigenia complains <laughs> in the play. Uh, it's the most spectacular set of cliff tops um, and, and, and very dangerous for shipping, just as um, Orestes and Pylades in the chorus mm -hmm. complain in the play. And that is where there was actually an ancient Greek, a uh, very important trading centre. And there must have been an awful lot of um, colonial contact between the Greeks and barbarians. Um, and the amazing thing, though, is that the West did not know that there was a theatre there mm. because it was excavated in the 1950s at the height of the Stalinist period. So the uh, news of it, the archaeological circles, sort of simply didn't penetrate properly to the West. Until what point? When did we find out? There were. Um, I found out about it through publications on 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 the Black Sea, gradually getting translated into English. We could have found about it out about it much earlier, but because the play had fallen into such neglect, mm. um, partly because people never said, "Well, where on earth is Taurus, and mm. why is it so important?" Nobody seemed to ask the question. If you look at any of the commentaries, they ne none of them make the connection. The actual yeah. academic commentaries on it. So I said this to Tony, and um, I said you know, I really love this play. And he says, well, I'm not sure I do, but I do like the idea of yeah. putting it on in Taurus yeah. and taking a Fidget and I back to Taurus. So it, it, it literally is a, a workable theatre. You could, how many people can you, can you get in it? Do you... Oh, it's certainly workable theatre. The um, local modern theatre of um, Sebastopol, which is called the Lunacharsky Theatre, after <laughs> actually um, Lenin's Minister of Enlightenment, <laughs> Um, the Lunacharsky Theatre have regularly staged plays. In fact, they stage Greek plays there every summer. They've done Aristophanes. They did a very uh, good uh, version of the Assembly Women, which you can see, the Assembly Women of Aristophanes, which you can actually see on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, you can set up lighting. You could see perhaps 400 if you were lucky, um, perhaps a little bit more, but it's very small, very mm. intimate, with an extraordinary sea view, just like um, in the play. Yeah. And just for people who aren't so familiar with Iphigenia and Intaris, can you just give a quick plot summary? OK. Iphigenia did not get sacrificed at Aulis. She was rescued and taken over the sea, through the air, mm -hmm. by the goddess Artemis um, to be her high priestess in the land of the Taurians. And for the 20 years of the Trojan War mm -hmm. um, and its aftermath, she's been... Uh, serving as High Priestess of Artemis mm -hmm. on the Black Sea, desperate to escape, very lonely. Now, one day, her little brother Orestes turns up. Uh, he's murdered his mother, he's murdered um, Aegisthus, and he's wandering around the Greek world trying to find a cure for his madness. Okay. And Apollo says, go to Taurus mm -hmm. and bring back the statue of Artemis. So this is just an extraordinary new sort of phase in Orestes' wanderings. But he turns up. Um, unfortunately, the custom in Taurus is that all Greek strangers who set foot on the land uh, have to Sacri suffer human sacrifice. Yeah. Uh, he's with his friend Pylades. Uh, we very nearly have a Phigenia sacrifice her own brother. Uh, 
But a wonderfully powerful recognition scene takes mm. place before that all happens. It's very, very moving, actually, because both of them think the other one is dead. So this long-lost brother and sister. Um, and they make good their escape with the statue back to Greece. It's a very simple plot. It's actually very like the plot of Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's like um, heroic guys and gals out there in the margins of the world bringing back an important totem. Uh -huh. um, okay. It's got a deeply problematic um, colonial agenda. Okay, and is, is that the sort of, um, sort of contemporary um, resonances that you think are gonna come out of, of, of Tony Harrison's translation? Or have you any idea? what he's been writing. Well, I do have some idea what he's been writing because uh, we visited the Crimea together. Yeah. We went on a research trip um, also with David Braun, who's Professor of Black Sea Archaeology at Exeter University and speaks Russian fluently and knows all the sites. And Tony's um, um, partner, Sean Thomas, who's a very great actress who tried out the theatre for us. I mean, you know, she was actually interested in how the acoustics worked. Yeah. And Tony's daughter, Jane Harrison, who is um, an archaeologist, as it happens, um, with the uh, extension department at Oxford. So we all went off. Um, and uh, it was an extraordinarily important trip to go on because uh, an awful lot of the Greek finds from the um, Black Sea really haven't penetrated Western classics. So we really needed to see what life was like if you were uh, somebody of Euripides Day on yeah. the Black Sea. As to what Tony's doing with it, he is incredibly interested in the Crimean War. Okay. Sebastopol is not just the place where the ancient Greeks traded with the Taurians. Sebastopol was uh, founded by Catherine the Great and Pachomkin after the Russian mm. Empire um, annexed the whole of the Northern Black Sea. They took it away from the Ottoman Empire in 1783. But then Britain, France um, and the Ottoman Empire all went to war with the Russians mm. in the 1850s. And we all know about the Crimean War because of Florence Nightingale, the charge of the Light Brigade. What most of us classicists don't realise is that it um, is exactly the same place as Taurus. How did you go about actually working with Tony Harrison? Well, we were incredibly fortunate because I applied to the Leverhulme Trust, which have a special scheme for artists in residence in um, university departments, where they actually really want somebody whose skills are slightly different. I mean, they if you're a classics department, you don't just try and find a classicist to come in. They um, like the interdisciplinarity of having um, a, a theatre person come mm. and inspire the mm. classicists. And Tony came to be our artist in residence in um, the spring and early summer of 2011. And we had several seminars jointly with the members of staff, which were totally inspiring because he would ask questions, say, of our archaeologists about mm. how archaeology worked or of our Greek scholars about how to translate certain words. Mm. Um, and he gave so much to us. He also saw many of our PhD students on, on their work um, and he gave a couple of big public performances to the college. Which are, are quite rare. Um, he doesn't speak often in public, am I right? Oh, or? we were so lucky. Tony Harrison hardly ever speaks um, in public these days. And he never normally allows himself to be filmed. But we were actually, it was so good having him because our department was under terrible pressure. Everybody knows this in the classics world. Um, there were threats to actually close the department, make many people redundant. Having Tony there, thanks to Leverhulme, as mm. our artist in residence that year, helped our morale so hugely. Mm. And he actually came and performed some of his poems at mm. our big event at the Friends Meeting House mm. in London to the general public, mm. free of charge, as our artist in residence. Mm. Um, I, I think it, it well. made it quite impossible for our, our uh, principal to, to close our department down. That's Marcias screaming. They ripped off his skin. No one ever wanted us to join him. Marcias suffered his terrible flame for a bit of innocent Aulos play. The Aulos, Athena's flute. She flung it away. So I shouldn't Marcias pick it up and play. A few blows and the goddess gave the flute she just invented, the elegant boot. She flung the thing aside. Do you know why? Well, think of the hours. Ever had a try? You puff your cheeks out like this when you play. And she didn't like a face to look that way. 
She thought it unattractive. Well, it's true, her cheeks looked like balloons when she blew. And who should find the flung flute in the grass but my brother Saturn, Marcius? Questions of cosmetics scarcely matter to one who has to give up the Saturn. It's not for good looks that those Saturns are noted. So Marcias blew and let his cheeks get bloated. He took himself off to a quiet bit of wood and gurned and puffed and grunted and got good. When is this? Uh, when is the play going to be performed in Taurus? Well, as we speak now, it's mid-February 2012. Very excitingly, Tony told me last week he thinks he's got a rehearsable draft. Now, he won't let me see it just yet, but we're going to workshop it quite soon and very much hope to have it on in London and back to Taurus during 2013. But the major inspiration has, 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 has uh, happened yeah. and the text has transpired. So thanks you very much to leaving him. Yeah, no, that sounds brilliant. Um, uh, Edith Phil, thank you very much for coming on Classics Confidential. Thank um, you, Henry. Yeah.